Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Paula Akana. And I'm Laura Yamada. Tonight, Making the Grade. Hawaii's public school system is on the eve of one of the most important labor negotiations in its modern history. On the bargaining table are contract changes for teachers and principals that would make them more accountable for student success or failure. KITV4's Daryl Huff joins us tonight with a special report on what some call a rare opportunity for real change in the public schools. Daryl? Paula, well, Hawaii's school system is on the verge, some people say, of either a great leap forward or another great disappointment. It will depend on unions giving up some of the most protective labor contracts in the country and be willing to tie the success of teachers' careers to the success of their students. It was all smiles when school managers and union leaders announced they'd won a $75 million race to the top federal grant. It was encouraging news after the furlough fiasco, but the hard part was still to come. There's going to be a lot of conflict. Any change that's easy should have been done already. We're at the hard stuff. She's talking about two promises in the grant application that conflict with the current contracts for teachers and principals. The first, a statewide core curriculum, which would give teachers and schools much more direction on what to teach and when to teach it. Sounds simple, but the state has already missed some of its own deadlines. Some of the things have slipped, and when we went to a meeting of other states, it's clear that all states are slipping. The second and even more difficult promise is to begin annual evaluation of teachers and principals. The current contract has tenured teachers evaluated only once every five years. The new evaluation would not only be more often, but it would use student growth, potentially including test scores, as a big part of the evaluation. Included in the grant application and documents, signed promises from both HSTA and HGEA, the teachers union agreeing in concept to evaluations if they emphasize helping teachers get better, not just firing bad ones. And the ones who can't, there's a, lot of, there's a lot better case for saying, okay, now this is not the profession for you. You've got to move on to something else. The school board chairman says he thinks the unions are ready for these dramatic changes because their membership and the DOE bureaucracy are ready. So we have a different group of people in administration and teaching and in policy positions, which have, I think are going to help to change how we do business in public schools and work with teachers. Is this the real thing? Is this really going to change these relationships, improve the schools, and, and, and quickly? I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe this was the time. This has just got to be the time. Superintendent Matayoshi said the bargaining on curriculum and evaluations will be a new style where you sit around a table and discuss how to reach a goal instead of exchanging competing proposals and trying to compromise, Paul. Interesting, but Daryl, why would the teachers union not resist these tougher evaluations? Well, we all expected that they would, but union leaders said that they wanted to be at the table at the front end of the planning so they could help the school leaders design evaluation formulas for teachers, and the, their goal is to make as little use of test scores as possible, Paula. All right, thank you. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, and coming up tonight at 10, we'll get reaction to all this from teachers, principals, and talk about what happens if they don't fulfill the promise, what happens to all that money. All right, thanks, Daryl. Sure.